was das da ist? Was ist das? Mitnehmen. Piccadilly Circus 1 von Zentrale an Leitung der Tagesschicht betreff weitergeleitet Haftbefehl. Augen auf. Diese Gaunerin hat die CTOS-Übertragung für die großen Bildschirme gehackt und die Gesichtserkennung Gesichtserkennungstechnologie so manipuliert, dass die Gehälter von jedem angezeigt werden, der vorbeiläuft. Ganz schön peinlich für Blumen. Das habt ihr nicht von mir, aber die zu schnappen des Kars bei den Blumenobermackern gut dastehen. Haftbefehl hängt an. Haftbefehl an alle Albion-Wachen im Großraum London. Hiermit wird angeordnet, Morgan Jewel festzunehmen und sie zu mir, einem Friedensrichter des Vereinigten Königreichs, in mein Londoner Büro zu bringen, um sich für folgendes Verbrechen zu verantworten. Missbrauch eines Computers und illegales Sammeln von privaten Daten. Leisten Sie diesem Erlass Folge und bringen Sie die Gesuchte mit dem Haftbefehl zu mir. Haftbefehl Nummer 322486 unter Vereinbarung der städtischen Polizei LDN4438. Aha. Aha, aha, aha. Da ist eine äh, Tube, aber das... Nee, ich will erstmal oben ein bisschen lang. Ah, oh Gott. Oh Gott. Hm, wieso ist der barfuß unterwegs? Ich glaube, ich habe ihm aus Versehen die Schuhe ausgezogen. Hier ist WLAN. Puh, gerade Brief via Mail von der Uni bekommen. Keine Schuhe, Lara. Keine Schuhe. Ja, warte, warte, warte. Ich kann ihm doch Schuhe hier anziehen. Habe ich die aus Versehen ausgezogen? Maske auf dem kompletten Campus und Vorlesung und Bib. Ach, krass. Warte, habe ich ihm aus Versehen die Schuhe ausgezogen? Standard. Ich habe ihm aus Versehen die Schuhe ausgezogen. Hoppala. Aber das finde ich gerade ein bisschen schade, dass es hier nicht mehr diese äh, lustigen Nebeninformationen gibt, wer jetzt was ist und so. Autohupe. Hm, das ist schon geil. Ich, ich frage mich gerade, in welchem, in welchem Jahr das spielt. Oh. Sorry. Eine Vorlesung sind mal eben drei Stunden, das ist schon hart. Ja, frag mal die Schüler, die äh, den ganzen Tag die Maske tragen müssen und teilweise so ihre acht Stunden in der Schule hocken. Oder eine Kassiererin. Einwanderungs... Agent von... Das ist ein Agent von mir? Lol. Wie nice. Okay. So kann ich also erkennen, wer mir gegenüber gut ist. Okay. Ja, ich weiß, es ist rot. Ich bin Londoner. Ich laufe immer über rot. Neuer Ort. Londoner Transport Service. Die Schüler sitzen mit der Wolldecke bei offenen Fenstern und werden gut durchgelüftet, die kleinen Stinker. <lacht> Stinker. Kleinen Stinker. London Carriage Service. Okay. Wie war das jetzt mit V? Kann ich da jetzt hin? Ähm. Warte. Öffnen. Oh, 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 da kommt was. Die ist nicht so gut, ne? Ha. Ja gut, aber da muss ich ja auch noch nicht hin. Hm. Dinger. Die Dinger hier, also die, die Haltestellen, die erinnern mich so ein bisschen an die Tribe Become Human. Oh, oh Gott. Es ist, als wäre ich wieder da. Okay. Oh, 
da hinten ist der Buckingham Palace. Und hier ist der, ähm, Dingens, oh, wie hieß er denn? Sen, ähm, 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 Dingens Park. Uh, wie hieß der nochmal? Mist, ich hab's vergessen. Aber da hinten ist nämlich so ein, so ein kleiner, so ein kleiner, äh, so ein kleiner See. Und da kann man richtig geil Eis essen. Ja, ja, ja. Boah, und Londoner Parks sind einfach so schweinesauber, ne? Äh, warte mal, da ist doch wieder ein Zeichen. Was ist das? What's that? Oh, was ist das? Hacken. Oh, okay. Nice. Keine Ahnung, ist irgendeine Währung? Ähm, mal gucken. Ja, oh, und es ist Herbst. So wundervoll. Ja, da. Warte. Da. Hier habe ich mal Eichhörnchen gefüttert. Dann kann man nämlich da hinten lang gehen und da ist dann immer die Parade, wenn die dann ähm, mittags ihre Wachablösung machen und so. Mega geil. Ultra schön. Ich habe den irgendwie größer. Die Musik. Die Musik. Oh, wie geil. Warte mal, da ist doch auch noch irgendwas. Ich muss da mal eben hoch. Magst du kein Hack and Slay oder wie... Äh Hack and Slay ist richtig. Mm, kommt immer drauf an. Also äh, Diablo zum Beispiel habe ich ultra gerne gespielt. Kurze Frage. Assassin's Creed Syndicate kam nach Unity, oder? Ja. Das war der Teil nach Unity. Gerade essen, sorry, hab meine Anwesenheitspflicht verletzt. <lacht> Alles gut. Nee, aber Assassin's Creed kam nach Unity. Mhm. Lautsprecher? Okay. Ich laufe hier einfach lang und fühle mich so wohl. Ich war's nicht. Ich war's nicht. Das sind doch autonom fahrende Autos. Wie kann denn sowas passieren? Bitte? Äh, läuft das unter Fahrerflucht? Ja, da komme ich nicht lang. Da muss ich hin. Da rein. Oh. Läuft voll durchgeglitscht. Ein bisschen, ne? I downloaded a patch to your optics so you can access our security system. It's set up so that I can't just let someone who isn't dead sec in. You will have to do the manual override. But what kind of manual override? Do I need to lift something or break something? <lacht> Muss ich irgendwas kaputt machen? Ähm, ein gesperrtes Objekt gedrückt. Kann ich irgendwie... Ich kann nicht mit dir reden, ne? Darf ich mit dir Dart spielen? Hm. Ah, okay. Ah, ah, okay, das ist cool. Das haben sie ja auch schon in, äh, im zweiten Teil so ein bisschen angepasst, ne? So, nice. Yeah, yeah, later. God save the queen. Wichtig. Darf nirgends fehlen. Äh. Ich mach mal lieber zu. A secret entrance. 
Very cool. <lacht> Very cool. <lacht> die Autos eben, der eine ist einfach durch das andere Auto gefahren nach dem Unfall. Ja. Ich glaube, Glit Glitches werden wir hier noch einige finden. Hallo? Is anyone in the dark? I do turn on the lights. Ich könnte da doch gerade was machen. Warte. Was ist das? Coming up in today's episode of the upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer Rot London. Oder blau. Pretty much my favorite topic. I could talk for hours about the rise of the AI system. Genau, am Ende sind wir einfach forget about its origins. It's so present everywhere. Desmond, der von den Toten wieder auferstanden ist. Bagley is the service AI that's present in every optic device. Whether you're using the optic, Bagley will be there. The AI is streamed to your optic from Bloom Central Command Center and it was first created by Sky Larson, our tech hero, as part of her techno-utopian idea for the world. Why do you think it grew so quickly? In my mind, it's no surprise that Bagley became so popular. It's funny, useful, fast. It's a great companion and really just makes life so much easier. I mean, when you look back at all the service AIs that used to exist, they just can't compete. When you ask Bagley anything, there's a quick answer and loads of information available to you. One day, I let Bagley answer all of my messages for a whole 24 hours and no one even noticed the difference. The other competitors really just couldn't compete with Bagley. Their answers were so much worse, they didn't understand anything, and Bagley pretty much gets everything right first time. Do you have any idea why Bagley really beat all the competition? Well, it's really the data, isn't it? Ever since Broker hooked up with Bloom, that's when things changed. And really, that's not actually that great. Bloom has data on everybody. They collect information about everything you're doing across the web through your optic headset. Isn't the AI only good because of Bloom surveillance? Well, I suppose so, but I prefer not to talk about that side of things. Bagley is so special because it's been trained on this huge cache of information. That's how these AI systems work, or at least used to work. I mean, we don't really know that much about the latest version because there's so much secrecy around the tech. But they're given this huge amount of training data. It's basically a huge database that's used to teach the AI about patterns in behavior. You know, so if you always travel the same way to your house, it can predict when you're going to go and get a self-driving car ready for you before you even ask for it. That's pretty terrifying. In some ways, I don't want this data to, to drive my life. It understands too much at times. Have you heard some of the rumors around the hacked version of Bagley? I've heard mutterings, yes. I've heard it's been used by DedSec. I wouldn't put it past them. It's pretty well known that they're not fans of Bloom. But the idea of a souped up version of Bagley, given it's already so intelligent, is a bit terrifying. I wonder what they could actually ich make it do. Können. Ja, ihr könnt auch, ihr könnt auch selber spielen. <lacht> ja, mal äh, Finger zu schnell. Ja. Okay, also diese Puppen finde ich ein bisschen gruselig. Haben wir hier auch noch was? Oh, da. This is the bug. Hello, resistors. It's bug time. Are you all sitting comfortably? No? Good. That's as it should be. This is the bug. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyze the latest blowflies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today, we're going to talk to you about Albion, uh, your friends and mine. Alice, the government has extended Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract, to me, that's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has Vielleicht been extended kann ich mich ja so many times, times lösen, like the Nicola dass wir, dass ich dann the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those like? contract extension negotiations went, probably like, like, a, like a footballer. In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favorite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona. Or <laughs> <Bayern Munich. laughs> 
the government panics and thinks, well, we better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors, who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures suggest. I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? At the moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> it's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts. Alice, I mean, are, are they paid per dissident duffed up? Is it, is it a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what is that rate? What do you think? Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some kind. <laughs> well, what, is the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99.95? Five cryptos bargain. Zip seems very reasonable indeed. <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway, because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway, isn't it? I imagine it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> I mean, who needs violent crime anymore anyway? You know, you can just starve to death without even starting a gang war. We do have to ask exactly what does the Prime Minister make of all this? Uh, let's ask him. <phone rings> oh, I, I hope they pick up. Hello, you're through to number 10 Downing Street. Hello, is the Prime Minister there, please? <laughs> Let me just check. Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, Andy, remember when you'd get away with prank calls without people coming around to your house to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> oh, happy times. You're listening Happy to the time. Do you think the Prime Minister will, will, will ever come back? I don't think we've ever had a Prime Minister. Well, that's a much more reassuring way of looking at things. <laughs> what have we become, Alice? When you look at the state of our politics, we're supposed to have the mother of parliaments. Well, this is one mother that has emphatically abandoned her kids in the woods to be brought up by wolves. And let me tell you, that never works out like it does in the stories. Wolves are bad parents, <laughs> uh, unless you're a wolf, in which case they can do a job bringing you up uh, as a wolf. Do not give your children... To wolves and do we actually own anything as a country now is there anything we haven't flogged off for profit oh i think we've basically just become a homeopathic britain yes. diluted and diluted until there's barely a trace of the original britain left but some quackish lunatics insist it actually works better that way it's total bullshit is there anything left new on the bug this week a new feature the bug off feature uh, the person who has most irritated us uh, in Britain uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off and to get things going. I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel. Nigel Cass, look, this is Britain. Uh, history tells us this place is a bastion of freedom. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel expressing his freedom to run a private army. I guess, historically, there is a precedent. The East India Company, that was a trading house with an army of 250,000 soldiers, which is a lot for a company. The Bug PLC has Alice with a water pistol, but crucially, <laughs> compared with Albion, the East India Company didn't operate its quarter of a million strong army in London. Uh, it did it a long way away, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Anyone to nominate for, for the bug off, Alice? I think today's bug off for me goes to my streaming service. I'm sick of being recommended things based on things I already like. The other day it recommended me to watch a reality TV competitive dating show set in a nude commune. Andy, I watched it and I liked it and I do not want to be the kind of person who enjoys nude competitive reality television dating shows. <laughs> I did not want to know that about myself. I have to go sit in the corner and cry. That's it from the bug. Don't forget the live show that is so secret it is definitely not happening at the usual time and place this month. Definitely not. And definitely do not not tell anyone not not to come to it. It's definitely not 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 Ach Gott. Okay, Basti, da würde ich mir aber langsam mal Sorgen machen, was denn da los bei dir? Ein bisschen feucht hier, ne? Boah, sind die jetzt eigentlich alle so lang? Ich hoffe nicht. Doch. This is London Calling. You're here with me, Tash, on Buccaneer. Your source for what they don't want you to know. In today's world, we've all had to get used to our every move being tracked by the optic on our temples, by the cameras around us, and with every click we make online. 
Seems like everything we do feeds the big data beast. Why are data giants like Bloom so hungry to get hold of our private information and our metadata? What are they using it for? Will we ever have real private lives again? What is privacy in the digital world? And what happens when capitalism and surveillance become one? As you know, we keep all names confidential on Buccaneer. Speaking from a secure location, here's new technology strategist Charles, who worked all over the world trying to keep democracy strong in the face of the data assault. D d das hoffe ich auch für dich. Personal data on somebody. You're able to predict what it is that they're going to do. You can tell what they might be passionate about, but mostly you can tell what they fear. And if you can tell what someone fears, then you can manipulate them and you can move them in particular directions. Like data is collected on citizens in every possible way. Data is collected through surveillance cameras. Data is collected from television sets. Data is collected from voter records. It's collected from how much power do you use in your house and how much water do you use in your house. In pre-crisis Britain, we got really used to all of our services being free. Everything suddenly became free that was digital. But what people forgot is Zufälligerweise that if you're not paying for it, then you're the product being sold. If technology brings out the worst in capitalism, capitalism brings out the worst in technology. Senior academic Alfie tells us how big business repurposes big data. Historically, what's happened, of course, is that people have traded their, their privacy for their convenience as, as smartphones and other kinds of technology came in and became mass-consumed, mass-used items and technological objects. Gradually, people were so attracted to the, the affordances of these technologies that privacy kind of retreated into the background and into a state we've got now where it's essentially gone. Having this access to this data makes huge tech companies like Bloom so much more powerful than, than they would be otherwise and not just in the obvious ways. Of course, there's a lot of uh, worry and, and fear over what they can do with the data, they can track anyone, find anyone, see what every individual is doing at any point in time. But I think there's even deeper reasons why this data empowers these huge companies to control our society and, and make us do things. So lots of predictive technologies which are implemented by these tech giants, it's not only interested in knowing what we're going to do, but influencing the patterns of our movement. So technologies might suggest routes to use in the city, places to go, restaurants to go to, cafes to go to, music to listen to. And these suggestions are not just predicting what we might like to do, they're actually influencing the way citizens move, think, eat, meet, and, and use their city as a space. So London has become a place where a small group of, of, of surveillance capitalist companies like Bloom can control the movements of individuals and, and orchestrate the way they, they move around their city and the way they essentially live, the things they do, the things they, they enjoy and, and the life they lead so we're really kind of outsourcing our decision making i would say to to a huge corporate capitalist company and there's something very very scary about that indeed all these technologies can be used to to not only influence us to act as the perfect consumer but also to prevent us from doing radical and revolutionary things so technologies in in in, in foreign nations have, that have been used are things like um, heat map features which show where populations are gathering uh, in-game rewards can be offered to people to take different routes things like that um, traffic data can be manipulated to prevent people gathering and, and protesting as has happened in in some of the authoritarian regimes across the world recently uh, so what we're looking at is is not only um, a set of technologies which make people behave as, as ideal consumers but ones which actually can be put to use to prevent radical and, and disruptive behavior in the city, which, which limits the, the power of any kind of revolutionary force. So if you thought you had a private life, get used to it, you don't. And we're not going to reclaim our lives without a fight. I'm Tash, and you've been listening to Buccaneer. Hatte Keep mich an die PS5 orientiert, Keep wollte mir Microsoft zu Chima kaufen. Das ist bestimmt alles geskriptet von... Aber jetzt? Tja, ne? Jetzt? Ähm, brauchst du das nicht mehr.